Yeah, especially because like they're cycling um, stuff. If they cast it on their turn instead of mine, it ends up being a lot more scary. Like inside out and shadow rift being cycled to find answers actually ends up being useful. So yeah, it's possible I should have just tried to win on my end of turn. Though I think tricking them out of the gush ended up being really helpful to me. So that part of it I like, but maybe that's too results oriented to say that, yeah, they had the third gush, so it was a great idea all along when maybe I was just risking too much for no real reason. It's just another tireless type. I think the matchup should be pretty great for me in general, though always scary. What the hell is this? Okay. Omen Speaker enters the battlefield Scry 2. Okay, I have no idea what this deck is. Maybe it is still Tireless Tribe and they just play like weird Omen Speakers just for like setup as an Augur of Bolas replacement or something. But Augur of Bolas is not even expensive. I have no idea why you would do that. Like they would have to think that this is better than Augur of Bolas. Probably there's some kind of synergy with this. Could there be like wizard tribal or something? I guess Augur of Bolas is also wizard. So the deck has to be lower on instant than sorceries for this to ever be better. I mean, it's always going to be incorrect, but angelic renewal. So you get a creature back that dies. Don't currently have a way of killing that creature, so I guess that doesn't matter. So yeah, it looks like some kind of blue white value flicker deck where they think this is valuable enough for them to... Yeah, I guess Hussar makes a lot of sense. Hussar also triggers the renewal. I'm not certain how this would make it into the deck, but yeah, it's... Guy Hussar is definitely a very powerful card and worth worth playing with. So Ashburns will be cycled here to find me a red source. Then I just have to decide what I want to shuffle away. The Evolving Vaults helps with the second brainstorm actually. So I could shuffle like Island Island, Island Deep Analysis, or Evolving Vaults Deep Analysis. I think Deep Analysis is always going to be one of the things I want to get rid of. Because if we're in like a flicker mirror, Archaea Mancer seems like a pretty great way for me to go over the top. Yeah, I'll probably just get rid of this island and then set up the second brainstorm with evil wilds. Though I don't currently have much of a need for card filtering yet. I guess I'll actually keep open bolt. If they go Sky Hussar and uh, not Sky Hussar, Court Hussar. Sky Hussar is the five mana like Kiki Jiki combo piece. Uh, that untaps all your creatures. But yeah, if they go Court Hussar and don't pay for it on purpose so that it triggers the Angelic Renewal and comes back, I could bolt their Omen Speaker in response and make it so that they get the lesser creature. Didn't feel like fighting over this, but maybe that's foolish. I'm not certain what to really expect here from my opponent. I felt like countering something like a Moldrifter had, had, had a lot higher upside. Because that goes super well with Angelic Renewal and would create like a huge card advantage boost. And I'm very willing to take damage by this Omen Speaker here. Mostly just trying to avoid like the Omen Speaker getting Ninja back to their hand and the Ninja hitting me. But yeah, your guess is as good as mine What to what is going on here. I guess it's time for Brainstorm. Try to shuffle some of these excess islands away. There's the Deep Analysis again that I wanted to get rid of earlier. Definitely keeping, I mean, I have to keep one of the islands, but I, do I want to get rid of two of them or deep in one of them? Maybe even the Arc Lightning. Because it will be a value game. 
I'm keeping uh, like making my land drop still seems valuable here probably should be fine operating off of a single red source for a while that can turn out to be awkward later but it does allow me to keep open double counter spell right now but yeah bolting their omen speaker doesn't even do anything for me at the moment in terms of stabilizing the board because they just get it back right away but it might be a downgrade for their angelic renewal if they get this omen speaker back instead of something else so i might still decide to bolt eventually and that seems like a creature i can bolt and not really care about it coming back though it will beat me down for a little bit but yeah that seems like a favorable way to get their angelic renewal off of the board without them getting any actual value they still just get a rift watcher which will put me to to 10 i guess i do miss cloud of fairies as well but uh, yeah my um, relationship with Cloud of Fairy is a little bit shaped by the fact that I won way too much with that deck and the reason that it is no longer around is because the deck won way too much so I guess I'm not the right person to talk to when it comes to Cloud of Fairies because I knew it was way too good but I enjoyed the fact that it was way too good so as the person who misses Cloud of Fairies and Splinter Twin and Sensei's Divining Top and Peregrine Drake, I'm probably not the greatest authority on what bands should be reversed or not because I know a lot of other people suffered greatly when those cards were legal and a lot of my joy came from just having absurd win rates with those cards. Might have to just counter some like useless prophetic prism type card at some point but i don't really want to the archaeum answer should eventually come down and contest this omen speaker with one two and one three bouncing off of each other yeah miracles mirrors were indeed gas had insane win rates in the miracles mirror and they were super sweet though i guess from time to time they were not as sweet if someone got counterbalanced top earlier than the other one and the game just ended in two or three turns but yeah the long games with a lot of decision making were super sweet mm, so now i do have archaeomancer with double counter spell back up that seems enough for me to run it out and stop the bleeding hopefully Okay. Preordain and Brainstorm both seem like candidates. Okay, I'll just go for Preordain because it's guaranteed to be good on its own. And the Brainstorm needs some setup. I would need to find another Evolving Waltz or Momentary Blink. Damn. It's actually pretty annoying. Well, I guess I'll just let this happen and then kill the rift watcher with flame slash but yeah that's a very powerful card it's very good against my removal spells because they just get to save their creature two times but yeah still not that afraid of the rift watcher beat down the blue white deck just shouldn't have a lot of reach so even if i take this very controllingly and play with my life total as a resource i should end up winning at some point just trying to out control them just have to make sure no more drifter type card resolves yeah i mean i'll try to stop the bleeding here and getting the second momentary blink side out of their graveyard actually does seem like it has some value to me i mean this would die eventually but if i take four damage by it and then they fl blink it again and then like and so on that just puts me in a lot of trouble where i can just avoid all of that by using two removal spells against it now i end up with a little bit of card disadvantage there but then the board is under control they have the stack under control and 
mm, for gut flood. It is a common, I mean, it used to be an uncommon in uh, neuphorexia, but they moved it down to a common in some master set. I think modern masters three or something. Hey, there's snipe. Okay, that seems good enough to counter. It returns a permanent to my hand, which basically like a worse than Roba Horror, but still them bouncing my bounce land to my hand and then being able to abuse this with flickers. Oh, I had floating blue? Oh, I forgot I had floating blue. That was just... Yeah, I just overlooked that. That was obviously better to do than to not cast the preordain. There was no reason to not do it. I just overlooked the fact that I had floating blue. So yeah, excuse that little bit of a misplay. Still love my position here. I guess these are not necessary and I can just very aggressively look for flicker. Having Seagate and Augur would both be fine, but I don't feel like I have a great need for them. Mold Drifter already covers my tap out threat so that I have something to do on my turn if I don't want to keep open too much mana. And yeah, my biggest interest here is finding my flicker. And also finding more counter spells always has to be high up on my priority list. Because stopping them from resolving muddled the mixture. I guess that can transmute for momentary blink, so that makes a lot of sense. So yeah, I can finally see the internal logic of my opponent's deck. Though, and like prophetic prisms allow you to have ghostly trigger targets on the board, though that still seems pretty fringe of an application. have to watch my playing speed once again. Kinda dirtling around a little bit too much. Also ran out of counter spells, so now Mulder Fears on my opponent's side are very scary. Though I still think it's better for me to just fire this super clunky deep analysis off rather than pretend to my opponent that I do have counters. Because that can find me my flicker and the flicker should lock up the game pretty easily. So even if they do resolve a mold drifter here, I should probably still be fine. They get some of the card disadvantage back, but I can like shoot it down. Do they have thin rover horrors? That would make a lot of sense. Fault grinder, wow. <laughs> Did not see that coming. I guess I'm, I don't really worry about it right now. But that was surprising. I guess they have Cloud Shift in their deck also. That would be another reason to go for this like super blink-oriented brew on my opponent's side. Yeah, I assume like Core to Tsar and or Ghost uh, and or Cloud Shift are the reasons for them to move into this deck which are the two new printings out of Masters 25 that should have made this deck better. Yeah, they're super all-in on Evoke. They can Evoke Moldrifters, either Snipes, Fault Grinders, and then blink them with the Evoke trigger on the stack. Look for a Counterspell. Nope, no Counterspell. Then I will likely just end my Flicker, of course. Likely just run out this Archaea Mancer and get myself a Counterspell, though this gives my opponent another turn of free reign over the stack. So still haven't found my Flicker, but it should be coming up eventually. I have a lot of cards scryed to the bottom. <laughs> yeah, blue-white land destruction. I expected them to just have the Norva Horror, because that goes with their theme really well as well. And would be a reason to run Prophetic Prism for the Splash. Ingot Shura in the sideboard, yeah, most like. I mean, Ingot Shura seems great in this type of deck. It's not doing anything against me, but yeah, even some like real decks, if you want to call it that, but like normal decks already play Ingot Shura. God damn it, the draw five. Evolve, more drifter, ghostly trigger. It's 
pretty scary. That's what I wanted to avoid at all costs, pretty much. Guess we have to get this small drifter off of the board before they untap and can momentary blink it. Should have sequenced that differently though, if this auger finds me flicker. I might have preferred to do that. Second counter spell or flicker. I guess flicker has to be the pick though. Because I do already have one counter spell and I don't have the mana to cast a second one this turn. If I had four blue open I would have potentially gone for the counter spell. Nah, no. okay, so now do I do end up with both. I mean, there's one still left in my deck, but I end up with two, that's what I was trying to say. Pyroblast should be great in the blue-white or jazz guy flicker against blue-red flicker matchup. Though my opponent has the heavier haymakers, the better comes into play tricks. As a trip players, I guess that makes sense as well, but yeah, I assume they're just on cloud shift, but I haven't seen it yet. Because cloud shift is the great new addition. Cortisar, I mean, it's in the colors, but it's not actually great with flickers, right? Because whenever you flicker it out, then you have to sacrifice it on the boy back into the game. I need to know where. Hmm. Yeah, I guess so. Could fight over the, this to keep my okay Mancers alive, but it doesn't seem too necessary. Okay, more Drifter, even less of a concern. Because if I untap with this, then they're just like locked out of the game. I think I'll let it resolve again. Because I feel like they will yeah, take more Drifter again. If they disrespected my okay Mancer the previous turn, they are likely to do it again. A Russian Cleric. Also don't care about that. Well, my clock situation is going to be a little bit worrisome, but I think this game is over. Yeah, I, that was my biggest wish for Masters 25, actually, for them to for them to move Cloud Blazer to come in. Cloud Blazer and Wall of Omens were my two requests if you want to call it that because uh, i'm a huge jess guy uh, i guess esper or jess guy familiars fan and those decks would get a lot better if they had reprinted one of those two cards at common but oh well okay let's take this ball as well so that my five blue can offer me three pieces of protection There we go. Uh, what to discard? I guess the Seagate, whatever, who cares. Yeah, it would be an insane flicker. It's true, okay. I guess they're on low enough cards in hand that I can counter pretty much anything and then start recurring my counter spells with the flicker. And that should basically lock them out of the game forever. Red Griff. Well, I can't truly counter that. I guess I'm going to let it resolve then and harvest pirate the away. And then the thing that I counter is their flicker trying to protect it or something. What? Four? Yes, done. Why is it not working? There we go. Okay, I've been experimenting with Flickr in paper and I feel Esper is better than Jessica right now. Yeah, it's possible. Like, Pyroblast is just so insane. That's the reason why you would want to be Jessica. But yeah, Esper is a lot sweeter, and Reaping the Graves is my favorite card ever, so I definitely love Esper. Uh, love, uh, love Esper. 
more than I love Jessica, but Jessica is like the more reasonable thing to be running because you do have access to Pyroblast. Also, I have to make sure I don't deck myself here actually. Maybe I should start recurring lightning balls at some point. But yeah, my opponent's pretty locked out. Could have played it even safer and okay, that's completely irrelevant. And gotten my second card as well already. What the hell? How do you expect that to work, opponent? I mean, unless there are plans to mill me by targeting my Mold Drifter with the removal so often that I keep flickering it and die to the trigger. But other than that, they already knew about the flicker in my hand and knew it had no. What is this even doing? Or I mean, I know what the card does, but I guess they get Angelic Green, or whatever. I have five bad counter spells, no reason to think here at all. Just counter whatever they're doing and then get myself another counter spell. Yeah, wasting time is my biggest risks. So I shouldn't be doing that. Because like one of them gets the flicker back, the other one gets the counter spell back. My opponent's at zero cards in hand. So I guess like chaining red griffs is the only thing they can really do to get out of this. Because those generate card advantage even through my counters. Okay, let's run one of those out. Uh, probably even if I hit, just put all of them to the bottom. Well, I guess Lightning Bolt helps. Whatever, bolt your face. Don't care. It might be better to just bolt their creature in terms of damage output over multiple turns, but yeah, I can start flickering Archaea Mansus to recur my bolts as well and close out the game. Turn creature sideways, yeah, that's what I'm doing. Okay, let's counter this even though it's irrelevant. And flicker these. Can probably just get double bolt, right? Bolt. Because I do have the extra RKM answer. Though I think double bolt is just lethal. They go to four. Yeah, no. No reason to do any math. Okay, triple bolt is definitely lethal. The familiar instincts in me are taking over and telling me to make suboptimal lines of play that preserve my clock. Which is a pretty good instinct to have. To make sure you don't end up timing yourself out. You're loving this? That's great. I'm loving this as well. Okay, so blue, white... Splash red off of prophetic prisms flicker. So I definitely want pyroblasts to counter their mold drifters and whatever all of their evil creatures are called. And I'm not certain. I might want Relic of Progenesis actually because it counters Angelic Renewal and it's like decent against the momentary blink. And it's like a no card advantage a card disadvantage way of fighting those cards. Like worst case I cycle through it and maybe clear out their graveyard a little bit so I don't run into Auromancer. Though I am hitting my own graveyard a little bit with that so that makes my Mancers and like my ghostly flicker lock a little bit worse. The steep analysis is like the card I'm most skeptical of in the main deck. I just think it's a little bit too slow for the meta and you end up dealing yourself too much damage for pretty marginal advantage over what could just be a composite research or a 4C or something. Not sure. Not a fan of it and I keep boarding it out. Uh, might be wrong. It's definitely a card that is great when you're in like true control matchups against blue, black or tron or something. The card advantage that this offers is great and the downside of dealing a little bit of damage to yourself is not as relevant. Goblin in the side. What?
Yes, outcast cards. It doesn't really matter how you win, as long as you don't lose and generate so much value that your opponent can't win anymore. But yeah, you can win however you like, as long as you make sure that the game is won. I have a goblin in my sideboard? Where? Oh, it's a merfolk goblin, what the hell? I was like, this is a merfolk, right? But yeah, I wasn't aware this is also a goblin. You're right. You're absolutely right. Okay, so I think I'll cut these. Not sure on the dispels. No, I guess all the dispels are actually nice to have, but... And what am I even taking out? Maybe more removal, because I don't really want to be removing my opponent's creatures. I just want to go over top with my own. Though... Uh, probably the scrat is even better than like a lightning bolt and cut one seagate or something i'm not sure it's difficult to make cuts when all of my cards are so great but yeah i wanted to keep the one scrat in my deck because they have some four fours the fault grinder and the i forgot what the blue one is called but yeah otherwise i can't get their higher toughness creatures off of the board at all <laughs> you are the master of goblins, that's very true. You don't necessarily need to even play the scrap package. I mean, like the mana base of snow basics is like more expensive than the rest of the deck or something. So for one scrap you could just run another flame slash or a second harvest pyre. I already know that some of the... Hmm, I think this is a keep, like barely a keep. Because I do have a bunch of lands still in my deck and like getting to three lands is always going to fix my hand. Pyroblasts are amazing once I find a red source. But could go wrong. I think it's like barely a keep. Uh, so yeah, people on Reddit were already complaining that this scrap package is too expensive and not worth it. And then going to a backup plan is not that bad. It doesn't make the deck that much worse. Though, having the one scrap can be nice at times. Okay, please, I need a land. Is it boiler works one time? Yeah, it is similar to blue, black, flicker, and... Uh, and blue, red pieces, for sure. I think I'll fire this off. It makes me just card to hand size if I miss, but I get to play a tap land if I hit. Okay, there we go. That was insane. Insanely important. I mean, it is good for Pauper to own snow covered basics and islands, but they are expensive for what they do, it is true. Okay, can we just keep drawing more lands? That would be real nice because I want to keep this pyroblast open for my opponent's more drift return okay good though now I don't get to develop my seagate oracle at the moment but yeah things turned out well I think I was a mathematical favorite but Getting there on the last possible turn off of the Relic of Progenitus uh, redraw made me sweat a little bit more than I was intending to. Okay, so now Seagate Oracle into Is It Boiler Works, and then we're Gucci. Preordain gives me like a slightly higher chance to hit, but I would rather get the more expensive card out of my hand. the hell flicker in response sure I mean it's a draw too but I think I can live with that try to fight their mo drifters that seems more important to me than fighting over there draw two because like not only does mo drifter generate generate more card advantage but also once it's on the board it's very annoying for me to deal with yeah, Monic Wall also seems like something I want to stop. Gives them another flicker and a threat on the board. 
So yeah, creatures with good comes into play effects are like super threatening, but they also have a lot of fluff in their deck that I don't care about. That looks like it's a creature with an effect, but it's really not. Like all the omen speakers and core to SARS and all that random stuff I can just ignore. Not sure if I'm willing to tap out for Archaea Mancer here. It's probably good to keep, get it onto the board, but I only have one Pyroblast open then. Yes, okay. Probably even recur the Pyroblast, even though that overloads my limited amount of red mana a little bit. But like Moldovia already covers the card draw aspect, so. Pyroblast just one of the greatest cards in the matchup, even if things get a little bit out of control. Well, I guess Fault Grinder would be awful for here for me here. Yeah, <laughs> God damn it, because that's not a blue card. Yeah, they're like half a ticket, so that's 15 tickets worth of mountains already. Okay, they blew up um, an island at is something I'm actually fine with, I feel. I mean, losing lands definitely hurts when I'm already in the pretty tight situation mana-wise. But yeah, I can take the hits by this Vault Grinder for a while. Hmm. Would be better for me to get it off of the board before it becomes Flicker target, though. So I might get wrecked here if this is like momentary blink, flashback momentary blink, cloud shift, destroy three of my lands. Yep. Okay. Guess we'll have to fight through that. At least they didn't attack first. I guess I would have just triple blocked against the attack. Yeah, then that doesn't really get them anywhere. Trading for my two creatures is probably worse than what they're doing here. Yeah, into the north with snow base is definitely super strong. But uh, in the constructed decks, you usually don't need that many with the dark depths. Though I guess in EDH you need a ton. Yeah, they keep exiling my mold drifters. I'm not really sure why. Into the north is gas. Okay, no attack into my creatures. That's a little bit sad because then I could have lightning bolted it down. No, I'm flooded on lightning bolts. Mm, that's pretty decent. Means I get to get rid of the fault grinder before they keep flickering it. So yeah, keeping the scrat in my deck worked out here. Though I still lost quite a few lands there. So, yeah, my deck has so much, like, velocity that you can make sure to keep hitting land drops even after that happens. As long as they don't blow up bounce lands, I don't end up too far behind. Yeah, I think that's fine, because it's not flickerable. Yeah, 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 definitely. Like, snow-covered um, islands are super heavily played in Commander, even 1v1 Commander. Because the Jace Friends Prodigy, Artifari, or whatever mono blue combo decks all play them for. God damn it, that is a card I didn't want to see. That's a very, very bad news. Uh, they all play uh, extra planar lands, and they don't want to give their opponents with. Well, I guess I get to Pyroblast the wall when it comes back down. Yeah, I'm I'm aware, but like just for the trigger, it doesn't seem worth it for them to flicker it. I don't feel like I have to counter it for that reason. Uh, if they, yeah, I think I'm tied up enough on mana that I have to bolt this. But if they have cloud shift, I'm super unhappy. Okay, that worked out. I haven't seen a cloud shift from them yet. That is actually 
slightly surprising. Yeah, exactly. Though I guess as soon as everyone plays Snow Basics, it's like no one plays Snow Basics. Like you force everyone to have a more expensive mana base, but then the extra planar land still ends up being symmetrical. So the gain that you get from like you running them and your opponent not running them kind of gets lost. Time situation here is actually the biggest concern. I think I kind of have the game locked up unless my opponent casts more white or red threats. Custody Squire are actually super annoying to deal with, especially if they have multiples and keep like looping those back and forth. My second Relic of Progenitus is on the bottom of my library at the moment, so hate to see that. Okay, these are all super nice. Uh, I don't know. Not sure on counter spell against Lightning Ball. Probably want the second counter spell, even though they're like uh, telegraphed to my opponent and I don't have the ability to cast multiple in the turn. So there's multiple downsides to that. But yeah, I think I want to cover myself from any more fault grinders or custody squares, at least after one more gen. Yeah, Tainted Pack, that's super important to split your basics as well. Uh, sure. Nope. This is where all the Pyroblasts get paid off. And yeah, if I get to untap with these current rare spells, I feel very confident about this game once again. Then, like, uh, Wretch Griff is the only thing that's really threatening to my current hand. And let's go with the one power creature beat down to close this out before I time out. I respect it a lot. It, yeah, it is two mana. It's a great win condition with Emrakul, the promised end. That's what usually happens in one versus one commander. Okay. Yeah, they keep killing my motor first. I don't really care. Would be nice to have like some kind of capsize or hoodwink or something to punish them for these journeys. I don't have that, but as long as they don't lock me out of Archaeomancer loops, I don't really mind. Because the engine of my deck is still very functional without Moldrifters. Mm, yeah, can't really keep open more blue mana than I currently do. Oops, I should have just taken the Ash Barons, that was kind of... I, I was th thinking Preordain, even though it was Seagate Oracle. Like I wanted to bottom bottom both cards, and I clicked on the Preordain first to bottom it. But actually, I just had to choose one of them, of course. And then I clicked on the worst one. I think Ash Baron cycling for Island would have worked out a little bit better for me, especially to put the Relic of Progenitus that is on the bottom of my deck back into my library. But yeah, very minimal difference, and I just have to make quick plays here over optimal plays once again. Apologize for that. But that's the situation if you play like a super deadly Ghostly Flicker deck and are constantly under pressure timing out. Could have played this Evolving Waltz also for the same reason and to enable my Brainstorm. But I'll just pass with double counter spell open now. Once again keep uh, very aggressively F6ing Auramancer. It doesn't even do anything, right? Okay, let that resolve. I mean, it's a 2-2. Two -two. Maybe I should have just countered it because it's a 2-2. Two -two possible, but at least I get to f6 now. 2-2 two, two blocker, slightly annoying. Mm. Yeah, I should have tapped Pound there. 
not a big difference. Keep playing fast. With on that. Okay, okay, sure. There's the flicker. There we go. Now the game is locked up and I only need to beat the clock. Oh wait, I don't have the second Archaeomancer yet. Not quite locked up, but I can go through my entire library now with flickering. Okay, let's counter that. Because I'm attached to my bounce lands and I don't want them to have a 4-4. There's the second arcane answer. So now we do have an infinite loop, I, if you want to call it that. And get to burn them out over two turns. So I have a dispel back up for a double flicker, so I get to put nine points of burn into my hand. Yeah, that would have been easily enough time for me to bolt them, flicker to arcane answers, get a bolt back. I get a second bolt back, untap, and then kill them during my turn. I would have probably ended up with two minutes or something left. Okay, so pretty grindy matchup. But Pyroblast is king in the blue flicker against blue flicker matchups. But yeah, it was pretty scary to get all my lands blown up by Fault Grinder. 